All right, guys, welcome back to yet another episode of the Stogie Lads podcast. Uh, I am, as always, Carl, and I am here with... Ruben, of course, and we are the Stogie Lads. <laughs> Thank God. I, I was worried <laughs> so, another voice was going to answer at the end of that. I sort of took, took a leap never, of faith there. You never but know glad. with these Zoom calls, you know, anyone can join in. <laughs> uh but it, it feels good to be back it feels good to be back um for the news i guess i'll start with uh i'll start with uh, just uh reiterate reiterating on this podcast because uh before i forget before i get ahead of myself uh you'll notice that i am not drinking alcohol today uh, i'm not going to spoil what i'm drinking but um i think most people already know uh because I did a story on it, but I'm doing a completely uh, white month with a few friends. So we're doing no caffeine, uh, no nicotine, which for me obviously means no cigars, uh, which is the biggest <laughs> deal probably, and then no alcohol, of course. Um, Ruben is partaking in the, not the, not completely in the no nicotine part, yeah. but with some stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've, um, I've decided to go with, uh, because I don't know if you guys have uh, have heard of it, but the snus in Sweden, it's like a little nicotine pouch you put uh, under your lip. And uh, I've had like a little, uh, well, I would I definitely wouldn't say addiction, but I've enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed having those in. So I decided to join on that call, uh, but I have smoked a cigar. Um, and that was actually part of our yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. Since you were, uh, since you were going on this <laughs> cleanse with no cigars, I had to, um, of course, step it up a bit and, um, yeah, and I've smoked one. Yeah, recently. you're taking one for the team, lad. That's cool. yeah, exactly. <clears throat> uh, the other thing on the itinerary, uh, I guess, uh, the all things cigars interview. We talked about it last episode that we were that we'd done it and it was going to go up anytime, and then it, they put it up like two days after that episode. So it is up. If you guys go to at all things cigars or all things cigars dot com, um, you can check out the interview. Uh, it was a lot of fun, like we said last time. Um, we don't need to go into it much more than that. We already talked about it, but it is up now, uh, and a lot of people seem to enjoy it, which was awesome. Uh, the my tier lists that I've been doing for fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just did the non-Cuban one because uh, I thought, like, wow, I, I'm not smoking any cigars. I can't do any cigar reviews on YouTube, so. Uh, these tier lists have been a lot of fun and so many people have interacted some people got really triggered <laughs> oh, yeah. some people yeah. well, of course it is some calls for debate intrigued. those uh, those lists some people hold uh, certain uh, markers to a very high standard and some don't so it's yeah yeah I mean I, it is e even the triggered people it's fun to hear everyone's opinion um, and then I guess lastly is that we uh, we are swiftly approaching uh, 15k on uh, the instagram uh, we're at 14.6 right now so mm -hmm. that just happened today so we're only a few 400 followers away from 15k and uh, we always want to just show a little bit of appreciation uh so even though 15k isn't really like the hugest ben benchmark like it's a, it's a nice little milestone uh and I mean, obviously, everything we do is because of and for you guys. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do something uh, a little bit special, but uh, I guess we're not going to get too much into it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not to reveal too much. We'll uh, we'll keep you guys updated when we reach when we approach 15k. Uh, just wanted to get, let you guys know that we are will be doing something uh, not as big as the It'll 10k, be nice. of course, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's still something to show our appreciation yeah. and a little celebration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be as big. Yeah, like you say, it's <laughs> we don't want people to get too excited, but it's going to be something uh, nice and uh, a little bit special. Uh, so, yeah, is that it for the news section? I think so, Lon. Uh So I'm very uh, interested to hear now that you don't have any alcohol in your glass. What do you have <laughs> in your glass? Okay, so um, a little teaser here. Oof. Ooh. Uh, okay, so I was thinking of. Uh, first going with some like mocktail uh just because that that feels a little a little um more special maybe but mocktails are just juice <laughs> yeah just very exactly. juice right <laughs> we were talking about this together like god they can sound fancy at restaurants when you know if they have some nice ingredients and stuff but it's just like fancier juice <laughs> yeah <laughs> at the end of the day or like uh, i thought you were gonna uh, pull like a um... <laughs> like a virgin <laughs> gin and tonic or something like that. We've been <laughs> talking about that as well. Yeah, Literally just, just tonic, tonic water. Right? 
so I have gone with an alcohol-free option. Uh, in Sweden nowadays, our alcohol-free beer market is huge. Like it has in the last five years or so, absolutely exploded. Like back in the day, obviously you could get something, uh, but nowadays you can get, you know, from IPAs mm -hmm. to microbrewery stuff. Uh, I've gotten something decently nice. I didn't want to go with like a Heineken 0.0%. No, uh, but it's something nice. It's a Leffe, uh, L-E-F-F-E. -F -F -E. For those of you that don't know, it's like a it's a Belgian beer. It's one of those uh, Abbey beers, classic Belgian, very well known brand. And this is their blonde. Uh, so it's a, it's a classic blonde uh, Belgian beer uh, with a lot of nice sweetness. Uh, it's a beer that I enjoy normally. And my line of thought with this was basically that if you guys haven't tried them, a lot of Belgian beers, especially blondes, are very very sweet already to begin with with alcohol so they don't really taste very alcohol heavy or like sharp with alcohol flavor so i thought then the alcohol free version must be pretty chill uh it shouldn't taste too like watered down or whatever and the sweetness is already there so uh i went with this and i'm actually very happy with it it's very 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 good it's probably nice. the best alcohol free beer i've had it has that nice sweetness it's just it's just like it feels like uh the same beer but with just like 30 percent less depth you know yeah the sweetness is a little more accented, uh, and you don't get that depth mm -hmm. that you get from the normal, I guess, brewing process. But it's very, very nice, uh, and I'm enjoying it uh, for an alcohol-free option. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I'm not missing alcohol too much right now, but it's it's going fine. Uh, but uh, for the lad that does get to drink alcohol, <laughs> what do you have, lad? Uh, well, I decided to go for the first time ever in this uh, doing the podcast. I'm not doing a cocktail. I am doing mm. a beer, actually. Uh, well, okay, kind of just cool. to like match you, you know, not yeah, go too far in the extremes. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I also have a little tease here. I decided not to open it until I don't know if that even sounded cool, but <laughs> <laughs> probably not. It it was a bottle, so it wasn't that much, you know. Yeah, that noise that it makes. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, we're not an ASMR channel, lad. So I think we're. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll get the pass. <laughs> I think we can work on that. Um, but I do, what I have is a, um, is a porter here, which I've drank one time before. I've, mm. I paired it with a, nice. uh, Rocky Patel vintage 1990. Um, and it was just an awesome pairing and, um, I haven't drank it by itself uh, and not since then. So, um, yeah, I decided to test it out. And, uh, this brewery is called, uh, Carnegie. Uh, it's a Swedish brewery and, um, they were like one of the first in Sweden to, um, uh, yeah, start like brewing porters, uh, and it actually I just read on the bottle here that in the early days uh, they exported to um, to Cuba as some of the first oh, wow. uh, porters. So um, yeah, that's a bit of an interesting uh, correlation here to the Stoji Last awesome. podcast. Yeah, like you said, you had it with the Rocky Patel. I can just, you wrote that in the post, but to reiterate, porters and Maduro cigars mm -hmm. in general are a match made in heaven. Those like, both things have such toasted and roasted flavors, exactly. they go so well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, just took my first sip now and it's just so dark and rich and I absolutely mm. love these kinds of beers. It, they are actually my favorite, um, my favorite style of beer. Yeah, yeah. they're great. For sure. Uh, so let's uh, invite you guys to uh, drink something with us. If you're going alcohol free like me, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, or if you're lucky enough to smoke a cigar indoors, uh, light it up and uh, we'll do a virtual cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. All right. So for the topic of today, lad, do you want to introduce it? Absolutely. So um, what we're doing today is... Uh, just discussing some cigar myths, pretty much uh, myths that we've been uh, we've come across like over the past years. We've seen people talk about, we've seen had people ask us and stuff. Um, so we're doing one big one that we we'll start off with, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, plume versus mold, and we'll get into that because that's really a big um, big topic that we've talked with a lot of people about, and really want to like kind of settle that once, just get our opinion or not yeah not as much opinion but maybe as backed as we'll present uh, out there mm -hmm. just to say what we have to say about that uh, and then a few other uh, myths which we'll get to later mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. maybe we can just kick it right off with uh with the f with the main topic 
which is plume versus mold. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, like with all all of these uh, sort of ta taste uh, family things, it, it, when they're not so objective, when there's a lot of subjectivity and stuff, a lot, a lot, a lot of myths uh, do come up. Uh, we and we when we were preparing for this, we we both thought of things that we had experienced ourselves, but then we also spent a lot of time googling to make sure we didn't miss anything huge. Yeah, uh, and some things were obviously you guys listening are probably more. Uh, well versed with cigars uh, than a lot of those things. I mean, some of them were things we hadn't ever ever heard, like don't dip your cigar in was it whiskey or water yeah. or something. It, there was one that was like uh, make sure to lick the entire cigar because I think yeah before when you didn't have the same humidification system like uh, control mm -hmm. you wanted to humidify it a bit or just like yeah uh, when they were yeah. completely dry you would lick them uh, just to get yeah. that humidity going. But it's really <laughs> strange nowadays to think about. Yeah, we found a lot of weird ones, uh, but we've racked up uh, the big ones for us. Uh, but what's so surprising, right? Because what I mentioned just now is there's a lot of subjectivity behind cigars. Obviously, they're a thing that people, you enjoy uh, and where you place your own values and thoughts on cigars. Uh, and obviously, a lot of uh, myths will come up. But the big one we have, which you talked about, is, is plume versus mold. And that isn't so much subjectivity as it's just a biological debate mm -hmm. of like, yeah, a bi biological debate phenomenon or concept and uh so what is the origin uh, of the concept of plume because this is what's so so yeah interesting uh so what you'll find like if if you just search plume on the internet is um that it apparently is like the fine growth of micro crystallized oils on the wrappers of cigars uh which is like said to occur when these cigars have been perfectly aged for a long time uh, so what the idea is uh, behind plume or bloom as it even is called um, is um, yeah it's just that these oils you know they they say that these cigars have been lying so well or so long in uh, well humidified uh, areas that these oils now have become like a crystals of some like salt variety mm -hmm. I don't really understand what it is but it's yeah some mm -hmm. kind of crystal um, yeah, the claim sort of uh, seems to have appeared out of nowhere. Uh, as far as I can understand, it seems to have been uh, like a lot of these things. Uh, the vibe is that they all kind of started in the cigar boom uh, because cigars didn't really have a lot of like cigars used to be enjoyed by a lot of people way back in the day. I'm talking like early 1900s. Then they sort of slowly faded um, and then in the 1990s, they just hit that huge cigar boom where everyone was smoking mm -hmm. cigars. I mean, it is crazy for people that are as young as us and didn't live between that er uh, age. If you just Google some articles, it is insane. Like all the celebrities smoking cigars. I mean, literally, it was huge. Uh, and obviously, when so many people new to a, a subject uh, get into it, uh, a lot of myths form. And I guess one is one that uh, was capitalized uh, by uh, by one sector sort of of the cigar industry uh but this claim that we're talking about appeared out of nowhere probably in the 90s uh is now pretty much uh, accepted in the community i mean when you look around uh, the internet you know books even on cigaraficionado.com on there I i've seen yeah, on their I know. own dictionary uh, they have under p or b they have plume slash bloom and they talk about it as if it's fact uh, and I guess, yeah, it, just before the internet and stuff, a, a, a claim like this could, you know, garnish such extreme uh, uh, wide acceptance just be, by word of mouth because you can't, you can't, couldn't Google stuff back then. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't uh, really uh, easy to, to check, you know? Yeah, exactly. And uh, as you said, like these things, they could just be spread by, well, someone put it in a book and then someone read it and yeah, it just, you know, it just continues like a wildfire. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you really start to look at it now, when you do have the internet and all a bunch of information like available, uh, you can find that there's not actually a single piece of evidence that has backed up Plume or just like anything like it. Um, so what you really start to realize is that there's an immense upside for like the cigar retailer retailers to be able to sell cigars that have this plume so-called plume on it because what they're really doing is just selling you moldy cigars um even like sometimes at a premium because it well yeah historically it was said that these cigars are it's a sign of perfectly aging them 
Uh, so what they're doing is they're selling like moldy cigars, which are worse for a higher yeah. price because <laughs> they're saying that is better. So it's uh, it's very like disturbing as a cigar consumer, like to have that um, phenomenon be as big as it is and so accepted as it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is extremely frustrating. Like you say, I really I get heated. Like when we were writing yeah. uh, this, I, I talked to you. I was like, I get pissed off at this topic almost because it is such an extremely clear hoax mm -hmm. by the retail sector of the industry. Uh, and like you say, it's they have the only people that have an upside are them. They can capture, uh, you know, this this sort of phenomenon. And not not only are they able to sell cigars that are actually moldy and call it plume, but they're almost yeah, they're like like you say, they're yeah. able to often sell them with a premium, which is insane. So they're getting rid of unsmokable stock and adding more money onto it because they're tricking people into that they're perfect. Uh, and like you say, there's not a single piece of evidence. And when we mm -hmm. say that, we do not say that lightly as if it's like, oh, there's no reliable evidence. No, there's not a single piece of anything pointing towards mm -hmm. anything remotely close to there being anything called plume. It just doesn't exist. Crystallized oils. Exactly. How, why, where, when, nothing. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing that backs it up. And it frustrates me so much that so many people believe it just because the people with the money to be able to like advertise and push this mm -hmm. rhetoric are the are the retailers and they're able to get everyone to believe it yeah uh, an another thing we've written down here is that if it actually existed right if this is a thing that they that that, that they they want to push on people right like tell you that plume is so fantastic why do, don't they just back up their mm -hmm. this claim with a little piece of, of yeah, evidence it would it's not be, expensive to do this exactly it would be extremely easy for them to do this because obviously they do have uh, cigars with the what they call plume on them in their stock because well obviously they're selling them uh, so if they really wanted to prove that this was some premium thing then they would test it and they would and then they could actually make a lot more money on it uh, because well yeah then people would have tipped completely to their side but um, what we have uh, now on the other hand is the internet which you can <laughs> search things and um, there has been a study on the other side proving that, uh, or they did test 10 cigars which had this like white crystal on it. Um, and, um, and that was very important for, for just like the realization of what plume versus mold, what this debate is about. So um, yeah, let's talk about that for a bit, lad. What was, mm -hmm. what was that study? Because this is this is the the big piece of evidence, right? Like up until now, we're just kind of talking about more general common sense stuff, right? Like if they want to push plume, they should be able to prove it, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff that you can you can use common sense with that already put this as a very red flag thing because there's no evidence backing it up. But like you say, there is one piece of scientific study that has been done that points to the contrary. Uh, and before I read this study, mm -hmm. I believed in Plume. The first, let's say, a half a year probably of smoking cigars, I read Plume on the Cigar Aficionado website, and I just thought, of course, it's real. Yeah. There's no way CigarAficionado.com would, <laughs> would write exactly. that Exactly. I just real, wanted right? to say, uh, exactly, like, uh, I'm going to let you continue, but the fact that it is still on, like, Cigar Aficionado is... Because that's that's really where, like, we've read a bunch of stuff to like especially in the beginning to learn about like cigars and stuff in general yeah uh, then we went to cigar aficionado and it's still up there like it's mm -hmm. still up there as a uh, yeah as a definition in yeah the cigar i find it insane yeah and and it's also um it's interesting because if you uh, we, we almost skimmed over it but if you google plume uh all this articles talking about it are from retailers you never hear cigar families like you never hear Padron talking about Plume. You no. never hear Arturo Fuente. You never hear Davidoff. You never hear like the growers themselves talk about Plume, the people that know tobacco the best. Yeah. You never hear any scientists talking about Plume. The only places you see it when you Google it is from the people that sell you cigars that <laughs> have interest in selling you moldy cigars. So let's get to this study, right, that we've been hyping up so much. So Friends of Abanda, so for those that you, of you that don't know, is a retailer, right, that should tell mm -hmm. you something already. This is against yeah. their own interest in a way. But it's also a huge message board, and I use it a lot, actually. Uh, some of the, like, wisest cigar smokers I've ever, uh, you know, uh, 
gotten information from are on there. Yeah, there's great like, people on there, definitely, who know. Yeah, there's huge veterans that have smoked cigars for, you know, 40 years. And mm-hmm. these are the guys that, you know, buy, buy, buy the tens of boxes every time they mm-hmm. do. Like, these guys smoke, you know, five, six cigars a day. Uh, and they got together and crowd sort of crowdfunded, as far as I'm aware. Uh, they also ha- seem to have, like, because it's Australian-based, so uh, through the team at Australia Biotech Laboratories, so a biotech lab that does biological research, uh, got together and uh, through people sending in cigars, so people uh, were urged to send in their own cigars that they believed had plume. Mm-hmm. So these are people that think these are my perfectly aged cigars because they hadn't thrown them away, right? They still had yeah. them in their humidors because they believed they had plume on them, sent them in, got them tested in this bio lab. And they analyzed all these different cigars. Uh, and yeah, what was the result, Lab? Uh, well, the, res- the result was that every single cigar um, that they tested, uh, they showed that they had different strains of mold and-, and bacteria. And there was no single like sign of any plume or any like crystalline oil or anything like that. Um, because it-, it is just mold. Like... <laughs> It's, yeah, it's for, hard to for me say now. I'm, I'm I'm studying like um, now I'm studying like um, materials engineering, a, a course that I have, and um, and I just find it like kind of absurd to think that from this natural product you would think that the oil crystallizes, or rather than that actually the living or that was the living tobacco leaf could like turn into mold in hum- humidity. It's yeah. like it's. Yeah, I think for me, it's like chemically, it's very reasonable to think that mold should exist on, or of course. does exist on some cigars. Yeah, yeah, yeah it seems very far fetched that it should, it wouldn't be mold. And it's, I, I also find it astounding because a lot of the pay, uh, the pictures that these cigar retailers put when mm-hmm. they show examples of cigars with mold or, or sorry, plume, <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip, uh, when they yeah. claim it's plume. Uh, and they put a picture up. It's so clearly mold, and I almost like gag. I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> this is just like spores of fungus. Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah, mold. Exactly. Uh, and I feel so bad for because I see it on Instagram all the time too, and it gets me so heated. And I'm not pissed at the people that have been misguided because I was misguided once, and we're just kind of sort of victims of this sort of hoax. Mm-hmm. But I, I just get pissed off that these retailers are still selling this idea. Um, and just what we need to get at is if there's not a single sign of evidence ever done, ever published anywhere that ever points to plume existing. And the only one, the only study that's ever been done, and it's been done in a legitimate lab, it's not in someone's backyard, this is a biotech mm-hmm. laboratory, has categorically disproved it in every single, it wasn't even one out of 20. Even if it was one out of 20 mm-hmm. that yeah. had plume, it was literally zero percent it was all and <laughs> yeah. if you go through the study um it, you google friends of obama's mold study you they, they even like they even analyze it to the point where they write which strain of mold yeah, which exactly. strain of fungus it is so it's you see it's a very they legitimate did, uh, study they did find uh, like um recurring uh, like mold strains in different ones as well so like mm-hmm. I, th- I remember there were like four of the same cigar or four of the cigars that had the same mold strain um mm-hmm. yeah there's very very little stuff out there with people disproving and i don't know if the, if it's just that people don't have the interest of doing it uh, i really i've felt for a long time probably for the last half a year i felt that it's almost been our duty since we have an audience of of us of, of uh of any size that we should really go out and try to teach as many because i see still big cigar pages are still posting stuff about mold because pretty much everyone believes plume exists uh, so I felt like we needed to go and talk yeah. about this. And, uh, you know, it is just, yeah, use your common sense. The only single study ever made proves, categorically disproves it. Uh, and the people pushing the narrative are only people that have something to gain. So mm-hmm. just use your common sense there, right? There's not a single logical way that plume exists. Until I see, I'm, until I'm slapped with a a scientific study of data the same... <laughs> exactly and until i'm shown a study of the same magnitude as the friends of abanos one that proves mold i'm happy to not believe in plume at all because plume is uh, completely fake sorry i think i said yeah mixing up plume and mold uh, because i don't want to use the plume word plume let's just at all make it, it easy exist. mold exists plume doesn't exist Absolutely as far as we right. know now. plume yeah. 
the plume is in the same family as unicorns and um, <laughs> Bigfoot and all that stuff. Uh, and then one last thing to talk about, lad, you can say we have a little tip for mold uh, before we can move on. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like, if you do uh, have a um, a cigar in your humidor right now that you think is plume, uh, then you uh, might want to rethink. Uh, and if it has spread to, like, the foot of the cigar, uh, you should just toss it. Um, but if it's lightly mm-hmm. spread on the wrapper, um, like, the a rule of thumb is that you can just, like wipe it off um and smoke it if it's all gone i i know i've actually bought a cigar once that was like in a tubos uh, mm. and it was uh, it was moldy like when i opened it when i got or actually first i went out of like the store i opened it and i just like kind of rubbed it off but then i was like no there was too much on this so i'm going back like and mm-hmm. returning it but uh what i did um like feel was that i could uh, at that point just like wipe it off um, and if you can do that, then yeah. it's um, then it's smokable. Yeah, tubos suffer a lot from from yeah. uh, not plume but mold <laughs> because because of the enclosure, uh, they're completely closed, so um, they they can uh, more often than not have uh, have mold for sure. Uh, but like we say, mold is disgusting. So in general, if you have cigars that you believe is plume, please 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 wipe them off before it's too late. Uh, but if you can wipe it off, if it's light, uh, it, it is totally fine. And this is like s- sort of the common consensus thing. Uh, obviously, it's your own choice. If you just want to toss them, that's probably better. Uh, than, yeah. Better safe than sorry. But that's your experience. Because I, w- I was going to ask you, but you already, if you had any experience. I've, ne- I've never had um, mold in no. my humidors. No, I've never had any, uh, any develop it like in my uh, mm-hmm. humidor either but uh, it was just that one time that I'd bought it I hadn't placed it in the humidor of course yet um, yeah, yeah. so it was fine that's why you use Bovita packs to be honest because uh, I remember I used to use my like humidity puck the standard one that comes with it and that puck like I'm very meticulous with my cigars so I check them all the time and once like two years three years ago when I whenever it was the time that I switched to Bovita packs I saw that in that humidity puck thing uh the foam in there that you water right to to Mm -hmm. spew out humidity it started it it started growing a little bit of mold in there which is very 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 common after googling it Uh, but that's when i was like no 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 way i'm not going to risk this like i don't want mold to come on my cigars so i just tossed that out got bovita packs and since then never had any signs of any mold it's always you know no uh, no worries so that's another way to counter it for sure do you absolutely um, so now that I think that we got that uh, plume versus mold thing out of the way and some tips to go with it, do you want to segue into the maybe the Bovita packs since you mentioned them just recently? Oh yeah, perfect, lad, perfect. Um, yeah, yeah. So this here, uh, here we have it. Like uh, the myth statement, uh, I guess, is that uh, Bovitas don't need to be replaced when dry. Oh no, wait, sorry. <laughs> I guess the, that is the, a myth. It's guess, a myth both ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The myth, I think, is that you need to toss the Bovita pack yeah. once it's dried out uh, yeah. that we want to, like, debunk, I guess. So this is another uh, case of where it's it's in it's in the very, very obvious interest of Bovita, the company, for you to toss their hu- humidity packs away when they're dry because then you need to buy more. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, and... I, I, I almost always, I feel a tiny, tiny sense of like, uh, I feel a little bit bad whenever I recommend yeah. this, but I do this myself and it is so convenient that I can't like forego it. But I feel a little bad for the company because I do really like Bovita. They do a great job with their company. Uh, and I think if everyone does this, they'll, they will go bankrupt <laughs> pretty simply <Yeah. laughs> put. But uh, like you say, the myth is that they need to be tossed away. And they write that and they write warning, like don't, mm-hmm. I think they do write warning, don't read like don't re- yeah, try to I recharge so but the warning is just warning don't do that or we'll lose out of money <laughs> because <laughs> if uh, I, I was taught this from Cigar Obsession on YouTube uh, Brian Glynn pretty much the biggest uh, YouTube channel but you can recharge Bovita packs uh, and they work perfectly for years on years on years uh, the way I do it is pretty much the simplest way that he does um, I just literally take a Tupperware container stick my Bovita packs in there uh pour enough uh, distilled water always go distilled water with anything humidity wise Mm -hmm. for cigars but i pour uh, distilled water until the packs are submerged 
uh, and then I just leave them with the lid on, obviously, and closing everything so the water just doesn't uh, evaporate. And yeah. then I let them sit there for a few days. I check in every few days, and then when they're when they look like new, like how filled they are, you just take them out. You leave them on a towel for like half an hour or something until the paper itself is dry and uh, they're good to go. Uh, one last thing, just about the paper, because I mentioned it. It's not, uh, a lot of people are. Uh, adverse to this idea because they, the sense is that it's paper, right? Like the bag feels like mm -hmm. it is a paper bag, uh, but it's actually like a completely breathable uh, membrane. It's not actually paper, so when you submerge it in water, it doesn't break down at all. It's the, the yeah. if it were if it were paper, the bag wouldn't work in the first place because exactly. paper doesn't let air like humidity in and out to begin with. So they are designed to take in and take out water. Because if you yeah. read on the bag, it says two-way humidity system, right? So it's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I also like use this, uh, of course, um, like from the first time that we realized uh, that you could do this. Um, and uh, yeah, there there is only like one uh, thing that could like happen that's bad, and that's when these like uh, I don't know really what actually it's called but these there could form like crystals, crystals around the edges. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah um, that are very sharp um, so if these like form around the edges and um, they like penetrate puncture the, the, the membrane bag, yeah. then yeah exactly then um, yeah then obviously if this happens in your humidor then the liquid inside will, yeah like spill into yeah. your humidor and destroy all cigars Just so be careful, uh, be careful. Yeah. like feel feel around the edges like if there's not nothing hard um yeah there then it's it's good to go and obviously this is not like a, a promise of quality i mean i've done this for years and i have some bovita packs that i've had now for like what two years plus uh, and they work mm -hmm. perfectly uh, but obviously if you do feel like you're your bovita because some people are like yeah this they form crystals and like i can feel on some of my sm like very the eight gram ones the very small ones that mm -hmm. they have like crystals but that's like okay they've lasted for two years i'm fine with tossing those eventually but what you what you can do with these is you can get several several years instead of like two months of usage you can get like two three four years of usage of bovita packs before you eventually want to replace them but and, and some people talk about the fact that they're uh, that they won't uh, like if you recharge them they won't let out the same humidity but that's not logical at all i mean these packs are it's yeah. not like why would the pack turn into a 72 percent one it's 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 the same solution inside no, exactly. you're just putting in exactly. water it's a two-way system um and then yeah. the last thing i just want to uh, say about this is like i say i've done this for several years and my cigars are as perfectly stored uh, as always like uh, as always the best thing to just do is if you have good hygrometer obviously check that make sure it's it's staying well humidified or just common sense i mean if you're i i do this the feeling test my cigars are in perfect condition all the time i've smoked cigars for mm -hmm. enough years to know when a cigar isn't humidified enough so yeah i know that my cigars have been perfect for several years because nothing has changed um and that's a very very good affordable tip for you guys um okay lad i'll let you choose the next one because we have a few written down uh which one tickles your fancy <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Uh, I think the aging one is uh, pretty interesting. We've discussed it. I like. I think very briefly in the uh, yeah previous podcast where we talked mm -hmm. a little bit about. So aging. what's the myth, but, lad? Uh, yeah, the myth is that aging cigars always improves them. Um, yeah, and um, like, sh of course, aging is a very big part of like the cigar hobby, the cigar. Uh, yeah, the whole thing about them, but like if you're aging cigars um, for, I don't know, like it, you, I guess you can compare it to wine as well. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just have a cigar or a bottle of wine for 40, 50 years and think that automatically it's going to be yeah. like much better. Um, I think there is a, for every like cigar, there is a, um, a sweet there's spot. There's a graph, I think, yeah, that you can yeah. see. Yeah, a sweet spot. Yeah, that you that you hit, and then it'll just start declining as well. Mm -hmm. Like I am. Um, that's what I've heard and seen. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's so different too. That's that's. I think. I think. I guess that's the bottom line of this myth. Uh, and okay, <laughs> myth is a maybe a weird word, but I just see so much. 
uh, um, <laughs> I want to use the word fetishize- fetishization of aging cigars <laughs> on Instagram. There's so many big pages that just talk about aged Cuban cigars as the absolute holy grail. And there's like, and they smoke like very aged cigars of all brands, all marcas, mm-hmm. all fucking uh, vitolas, every like different type of cigar and it doesn't matter which one it is as long as it's aged but that's not really how it works yeah uh, <laughs> i mean everyone has a, a like different um different taste i mean i, I if the part the Partega series d number four for example uh, is one that i think i talked about it in my review uh, a lot of people prefer that young nowadays uh, because a lot of people mm-hmm. say that that blend has slowly throughout the years gone to a more mellow state uh, so the only way to get it back to where like an aged PSD4 now like an, a 3 year aged one now is like a 10 year aged one from like 20 years ago you know like it, it's gone so much more mellow mm-hmm. that if you want to recapture the glory days of this and this is this is like anecdotal ev- evidence that I've gathered from tons and tons and tons of cigar smokers from many different forums that, that they talk mm-hmm. about this cigar is a good example of some people just love it when it's young because it has that you know punch that Partagas used to have more of yeah and not as much today um and if you age it a lot it just kind of becomes a little too mellow yeah i guess this one's pretty difficult it's because it's more subjective than Mm -hmm. like objective than uh, the other ones and um exactly so what what happens when you age it is like that like generally it just like mellows out the the flavors just kind of they marry together more um so of course like it'll be different from person to person if you like very aged cigars or not um but yeah that's the thing that the myth that we want to like debunk is that a like always aged cigars are not um like aging cigars is not always uh, the best uh all right so one next myth uh one frustrating one for me uh it's it's sort of connected to a lot of the like uh, the cigar anti cigar health speak, uh, and I'm never gonna be want, uh, a person that pretends that cigars are healthy. Some people try to claim that uh, cigars do more positive than bad. I I'm gonna be honest. Tobacco in any case, ingesting it in whatever way you do, it's not good. It is carcinogenic. But a lot of rhetoric around the health sites talk about them in the same sort of manner as cigarettes which frustrates the hell out of me because there is no single way they can be the same Uh, and one myth that they commonly use which is just straight up it's 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 not a myth completely but it's a myth in the way they construe it Uh, they misconstrue it on purpose it is the whole nicotine thing with cigars i just wanted to touch on it because they use this line and they love it Hmm. anti-tobacco doctors love the line one cigar contains up to as much nicotine as a whole pack of cigarettes you're gonna die if you take three puffs it's uh it is so oh my frustrating. god you sound like my my family doctor a lot what what's good <laughs> change your doctor uh but it is it is it is really really stupid uh just to say i mean it is so so dumb because obviously that is such a effective line. It sounds like cigars are insane, right? A whole a whole pack of cigarettes in a cigar. I mean, that's that's yeah. poison, right? But it's just not relevant because you inhale cigarettes down to your lungs, yeah. where the smoke literally goes into your internal organs and is like ingested into your blood system in the most effective <laughs> way possible. Exactly. Like there's literally no, like no more effective way of getting nicotine into your bloodstream than in, like inhaling it into your lungs whereas with cigars first of all you take like a puff a minute mm-hmm. of a cigar that's the, the sort of rate you're supposed to smoke it and the second of all you keep it in your mouth for a couple of seconds and you blow it out it's in your mouth a place where you barely absorb any nicotine at all so the fact that it contains as much nicotine as a whole pack of cigarettes, I mean, anyone that's tried a cigar knows that that is null and void from the get-go because I've never gotten, like, the nicotine rush. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a cigar, a cigarette smoker at all, but I've tried cigarettes like most people have in their mm-hmm. lifetimes. And the feeling you get from the cigarette smoke is like a head rush of nicotine. Yeah, exactly. It's intense, whereas with, like, the the max I get from a cigar is I feel a little, like just a little tiny bit woozy like if if i've been in a lounge that's that's yeah. pretty much the only times i feel that that like little lightheadedness slight 
or not like have the uh, eaten before a cigar or something like that stuff mm-hmm. like that can affect it i think one thing that i saw when i was just like when we just started smoking cigars was that uh, i don't know what it was a reference to but it was like that one cigar is like 64 uh 64 cigarettes and i think mm-hmm. like the actual thing was just like is like 64 cigarettes and uh, do they mean tobacco amount or like tobacco so weight stupid. i don't really understand but it was just like such a uh like angled type yeah. of quote you know like 64 cigarettes what does that even mean <laughs> Like, look, I'm not going to clown people for trying to get people to not smoke. That's fine. Yeah, I, get no, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I, I feel like there's, when you're purposefully being so misleading, it just like, it, it rubs me the wrong way because I, I hate people trying to portray cigarettes as an addiction, a vice, and a disgusting habit, and not what I believe it is, which is a passion, just in the same way that cognac, rum, whiskey, wine is a sort of passion for all the senses which, which is what i think cigars mm-hmm. are so that's just one of the myths i wanted to break down and i guess sort of in the same uh you know s- yeah not nicotine uh, per se only but yeah you can go with the next one lad yeah uh exactly i think this will be our final myth of the night uh mm-hmm. and that is that um that size the size of the cigar doesn't automatically equal the strength of the cigar um and for, yeah what we mean is like a very big cigar doesn't have to like be very strong contain a lot of nicotine and stuff like that um it's you can have very like slim cigars that actually have very concentrated flavor um or strength and uh, like we talked about in um in the episode where we created our own uh, cigar brand um, we discussed a bit like about the the different types of leaves that you have in the binder and filler which actually creates like the strength of the cigar like uh, the ligero leaf uh, which is the top leaf on the tobacco plant is um, well yeah it's the one that like is the cause for how strong the cigar will be like nicotine wise uh, and another point I wanted to like kind of add to that was that uh, that I've seen a bit is that um, Maduro cigars aren't like stronger than mm, Connecticut's yeah. or lighter leaves. That kind of fits in here as well because it's what's like in the inside um, more than the wrapper that actually creates like the strength um, of the cigar. Yeah, spot on, lad. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it is very easy to just equate what you see on the outside as uh i mean every time someone it's the inside that counts am i right lad (laughs) (laughs) it's the filler that counts we got to that in our uh, cigar blending yeah (laughs) hey you're a good person it's the filler that counts (laughs) (laughs) that's spot on lad uh we're gonna have to trademark that real quick so no one steals that line uh but yeah like i like i was getting to uh, whenever like family that don't know anything about cigars or friends like if they ever ask to like check out the humidor or whatever and they see the maduros they, they, they're always so eye-catching for some reason yeah i remember when i had like a liga privada in my top uh top um like a shelf or whatever like that was the most visible one i just remember everyone going like oh god what's that one <laughs> that one's got to be really strong right exactly, and okay yeah. liga privada is like a punch in the face cigar but it's not the strongest cigar i've smoked by far mm-hmm. uh it's funny because like the a lot lighter wrapper cigars like padron and stuff can be a lot heavier than maduros it's just it just goes to show that stuff like this can be very misleading yeah uh let's see if we have time for a question Absolutely. Uh, i'm gonna find a good one lad and i'll uh and i will uh hit you with it perfect all right so uh from george okay wow this guy has a funky username from george the artist not the poet <laughs> <laughs> uh what do you guys do with bands any projects and crafts now this is funny that he asked this is an, an older question that we had uh we did a lot of like sending your questions for the that we archived but i actually posted a story yesterday where i was because uh, i've been using my behike 52 cigar box which is a beautiful lacquered box and i've been putting all my bands in and for those that don't know i collect my bands and i do urge you guys to do the same because i feel like cigar bands are kind of a work of art in a way like they, they are beautiful there's a lot of thought that goes down to it and it feels a little bit sad to toss them i mean obviously i do toss a lot uh but to cut things short 
I save every unique band. So you guys know I love H. Upman. I've smoked probably, I don't even know how to estimate, but I've smoked a lot of H. Upmans, but I only have one H. Upman band in there because I don't keep duplicates. So, uh, but I do have a lot of bands now. Uh, it's gone to a lot and they don't fit in there anymore, even though I try to like stuff them down. So I've moved some to my, uh, like another Cohiba box that, that I keep on here. Uh, because I do have something in mind to do, but I'm not sure yet. But like, you have you've seen some good stuff, yeah. right? You're the more art art oriented <laughs> one of us. <ours. laughs> uh, exactly. There was this period when uh, when I was like really interested in like getting a piece of art, uh, cigar band art, um, just like because it's it would be so cool to have like a cigar decoration in uh, like in your home. Um, and so I started to look like on um, on Instagram under hashtag cigar band art and stuff like that and found mm. some like super cool uh, pieces of art uh, like that from a distance you can even see that it was uh, that it was bands um, but like once you yeah. came close you could see all these different uh, like it was like a Louis Armstrong stuff. one was one of them exactly yeah and that, that was like the dream and I think I, those were extremely expensive, of course, because they're all handmade. Um, but uh, yeah, I've also been saving some uh, when I can remember. Like, <laughs> I often put them <laughs> in my jacket pocket, so I, I'll find them yeah. there a couple of days later, and and it'll be a bit uh, a bit worn yeah. out. Uh, but um, yeah. but yeah, if we like get the chance to just sit down and try to make something cool out of that that'd be that would be awesome. i would definitely put something like that on my wall um so there is definitely some interest in doing that i've um, and it's it's cool like in a symbolic way because to speak like the kids it's low-key a very flexy piece of art <laughs> to be honest if you think yeah. about it right it it looks simple but if you don't print bands online on, on, on paper, it's actually like a very expensive piece. Yeah. Because to get cigar bands, you need to buy a real cigar, right? Exactly. So like, if you think about all the money that's gone down to make, that's why, because I remember we t us talking about these these um, these paintings you, you could buy. Uh, mm -hmm. The authentic ones that we saw that had real cigar bands were crazy expensive. And we were first like, oh God, that's a lot of money. But when you think about it, like I say now, if, yeah. you, if you're using like, you know, Arturo Fuente Opus X bands and stuff, like yeah. that's like, you know that's already thirty dollars a cigar, and one band is so little yeah, for exactly. an entire work of art. That's crazy. Just the cigar bands themselves are expensive. Definitely, and then just having having a piece of art that's that's um, consisting of like the bands that you've smoked as well yourself would be so yeah. cool. Just to have like that whole yeah. just connecting kind of like the circle. I think you'd say like uh, just the piece of art that the cigar is in itself to you smoking it to you actually making a piece of art out of it as well would be really cool yeah that is awesome yeah i gotta do it i'm, I'm more inspired now than ever yeah uh, <laughs> it's just but, gonna be uh, so difficult putting that first one down you know like committing yeah, to actually yeah. making a piece but yeah you're right uh but yeah more inspired than ever like i said i gotta i gotta think of something uh, but yeah, I think uh, that's all the uh, the stuff we guys we got for you guys today. Uh, yeah. I hope the uh, the myths were. If your if your only takeaway from this is that you go and inspect your cigars and uh, you keep an open mind that plume isn't real, uh, then I'm very happy to have you know inspired some people to uh, to uh, see the right see the light. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. As always. Uh, uh that's all from me carl yeah thank you guys um we'll see you in the next episode <laughs> yeah cheers guys cheers <laughs>